I am injecting experimental research chemicals into my body. This is called the Wolverine Protocol, named after the Marvel superhero who's able to regenerate and heal from injuries very, very quickly. I have an injury at the moment, and I'm willing to do just about anything to recover from it, including growing my beard out in order to get the full Wolverine effect. So let's talk about it. Before we get started, I am very excited to announce that Old Grappler Summit number two is coming to San Diego this July 2024. I ran our first Old Grappler Summit last month, and it was a runaway success. We sold out, we had a waiting list, we had people reaching out saying, please do another one of these in the future, I would love to attend. And so, by popular demand, we're going to do another one. It's July 12th, 13th, and 14th. It's a three-day uh, jiu-jitsu and social gathering for the over 40 grapplers out there where we discuss uh, strategies and solutions and techniques for dealing with those younger, more powerful athletes that we routinely struggle against. Uh, if you think you might want to attend, the best place to go is my website. Go to rickellis.com and click the events tab and all the information you need is there. And I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to getting some good training in with you. And honestly, who wouldn't want a three-day vacation in San Diego in July? It's going to be beautiful out here, and so I hope you can make it. So about three months ago, I got injured. I dislocated my clavicle, the sternoclavicular joint, the SC joint popped out. I got compressed on the jujitsu mat and smashed and it popped. I didn't realize it was my clavicle initially. I thought it was just my shoulder. I went and got some diagnostics and we couldn't find anything wrong with my shoulder. Well, it turns out that I dislocated the joint. And uh, you know, people don't realize that the shoulder floats the shoulder girdle, the scapula, the clavicle, all this stuff just floats. It's connected in one place and that's at the SC joint. And so as you move your shoulder, that SC joint articulates. But because I dislocated it, mine froze up and then I got a bunch of secondary problems as a result of that. The brachial plexus, the nerve bundles that run through your neck and into your clavicle and into your shoulder, those things got chafed up because I didn't take any time off. I insisted on continuing to train, continuing to go to the gym and lift weights and do all the things I was doing physically. And all I did was make it way worse. I think I even have a, a, a bit of a tear in my pec minor because the insertion here has been very, very sore. So a few months ago, I said, I gotta take some time off. I'm just making it worse. And so I did. But unfortunately, these kinds of injuries take for ever to heal. I know two people that have uh, dislocated their clavicle. Both of them have said, have said the same thing. They said, look, you're looking at at least eight months before it's gonna be back to normal, maybe a year. And uh, so I have been frustrated. About a month ago, a friend of mine said, you need to be looking at peptides. And in particular, you need to be looking at these two peptides. And so uh, at that point, I didn't know much about peptides other than what I had learned in high school uh, science class, that peptides were short chains of amino acids similar to proteins, and our body produces thousands of peptides. They're in our cells, they're uh, throughout our body, and peptides are uh, they are signaling molecules that send instructions to your body to do things. And there are all sorts of things that peptides can do uh, that are positive and necessary for your body. Well, uh, that's about all I knew about peptides. I knew that some pharmaceutical products were based on peptides. For example, insulin is a peptide. Your body makes insulin in the pancreas, uh, but for those that can't make it in sufficient quantities, you can take it exogenously. Um, uh, you know, through an injection, or that new weight loss drug, Ozempic, that's coming out, that is a peptide. They took, they isolated a peptide from the human body and they modified it to have a longer half-life and in doing so, the pharmaceutical company allowed it to be patented and now they're selling it as a weight loss drug. So um, 
Peptides are used in medicines. They are used in over-the-counter products. A lot of skincare products have peptides. There's a peptide called GHK copper peptide that you find in a lot of skincare products. There are uh, peptides in supplements uh, for gut health and for various things. And so peptides are you know, relatively common. Um, and I think there's been a lot of research on peptides. But again, I didn't know much about them. And it turns out that there is a category of peptides out there, which I, uh, I'll call experimental peptides. They are treated as research chemicals by the companies that you can go purchase these from. And the reason for that is because they don't have FDA approval. And the reason they don't have FDA approval is because they have not undergone a lot of clinical trials involving humans yet. Uh, a lot of these have been studied in animals. Uh, and this particular protocol that I'm doing, the Wolverine protocol, which involves two different peptides, those have been pretty well studied in animals and they will do uh, pretty catastrophic things to these. They'll you know, sever the tail of a rat or they'll se sever an Achilles tendon or they'll destroy the knee in some way. And compared to the control group, the, the group of rats that are getting these compounds tend to heal very, very quickly, which is why they call this the Wolverine protocol. It induces healing at a very, very rapid pace. Um, now, there, there are a lot of people out in the world that are experimenting on themselves with these peptides. A lot of this research is coming from fitness communities, the bodybuilder communities. You know, bodybuilders are, as a group, they tend to be very risk tolerant and very willing to experiment on themselves. Uh, you find, um, you know, fitness coaches, exercise physiology, physiologists that are experimenting with peptides. You even have medical professionals, especially the ones that are coming from functional medicine or restorative regenerative medicine. You're finding that they are starting to look at these peptides as well. But again, they're a little bit experimental. Um, peptides generally have a very good safety uh, profile. And it's because they are bioidentical to what your body produces. So when you take a peptide, you're taking something that your body naturally produces. So they tend to be very safe. They tend to be very, you know, well tolerated by your body. You don't, you know, find that these things cause allergic reactions or anything like that because they're, they're compounds that your body produces. You're just putting more of that thing into your body. And so because of that, a lot of people have been experimenting with that. And so there's a lot of anecdotal evidence, a lot of, you know, anecdotal data. There's a lot of subjective information out there from people that have done this stuff to and have gotten very positive benefits from that. And there are a lot of different peptides that do all sorts of different things. There's one called CJC1295 that boosts your, your growth hormone. Um, you know, there are peptides that increase muscle mass. There are peptides that decrease inflammation. There are peptides that do all sorts of stuff. And so a lot of people are looking at these right now, uh, including me. I decided, you know what? I need to heal from this injury quickly. And so about two weeks ago, I started this protocol and I'm doing two peptides right now. The first peptide is called BPC-157 body protective compound 157. It's a peptide that's produced in your gut and it has, as the name implies, a protective quality. Uh, and the way that this substance works is very interesting. It works through a process called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the formation of new blood carrying uh, structures, new capillaries, new blood cells, new blood tissues. And so typically what happens in your body when you sustain an injury, let's say you injure your knee and your knee swells up, what happens is that your capillaries will uh, release a compound called VEGF. And VEGF signals to the body that it needs to produce more blood to that area. It needs to create capillaries, it needs to create more mechanisms that allow the transportation of blood into that that structure in order to help that structure heal. Uh, there's also a therapy that's very common out there called PRP, platelet-rich plasma, which you might have heard of, where they take some of your own blood, they put it into a centrifuge in order to concentrate the platelets, and in doing so, it concentrates the growth factor 
uh, which is um, that an angiogenic uh, effect in the blood, and then that blood gets injected back in your body at the site of an injury or the site of something that you're trying to repair. And uh, the premise is that that extra blood that stimulates that, that, that uh, you know, regenerating uh, potential. Well, it turns out that BPC-157 is an angiogenic compound. It produces angiogenesis. That's the mechanism by which it works. It stimulates the production of more blood-carrying um, structures into your body. And so if you're someone that has um, an injury, maybe a musculoskeletal injury, a tendon injury, a joint injury or something, those things don't typically get a lot of blood flow. And so if you can systemically increase your body's ability to create more blood pathways, then you are rapidly increasing the ability of the body to heal. And so that's how that one works. The second compound is uh, um, called thymosin beta-4, or it's also called uh, TB500. Uh, thymosin beta-4, TB500. It is produced in the thymus gland, and it is a compound that has also a lot of healing properties, healing effects. It reduces inflammation. It has regenerative uh, effects. And when you stack those two compounds together, they have a very, very rapid healing ability. And I have noticed, even though I just started this protocol two weeks ago, prior to two weeks ago, I was stuck. It felt like day to day to day, nothing was changing in how I felt. But over the past two weeks, I feel like all of a sudden, things are moving in a positive direction. Number one is my nerve pain has decreased significantly. And number two, I actually have more pain which is interesting. I have a lot more pain right here at the SC joint. And I suspect the reason for that is that all of a sudden my range of motion in my arm is way, way better. Two weeks ago, it was hard for me to raise my arm overhead. Now I'm able to do it a lot more without getting as much nerve pain. And so that tells me that this joint is free now to start moving more freely. And because of that, I'm getting more joint pain temporarily. Uh, and so it feels like this stuff is really working and I'm pretty excited at the effects of this. Uh, what are the risks of doing these compounds? Well, one of the risks is that we simply don't have a lot of data on human subjects yet. So there's a little bit of an unknown quality to this. That said, peptides tend to be very safe, which is why a lot of people are doing them. Uh, it seems to have a very low risk profile. However, uh, BPC-157, because it's angiogenic, because it produces more blood carrying pathways, one fear that is kind of common out there is that if you have cancer cells, if you have you know, abnormal structures in your body, um, maybe you know some benign tumors, maybe some not so benign tumors. The, the theory is that this stuff could, in theory, stimulate those things to grow. And so generally, uh, people recommend not doing these compounds uh, on a long-term basis because we simply don't know what the long-term effects are, even though you do find people that do just that. When you go down that rabbit hole and you start looking at protocols and dosing, you find that there are people that have very high risk tolerance who are willing to do this stuff every single day as a lifestyle. And nothing bad seems to be happening, but, happening, but that still makes me a little bit nervous. So I'm on a 30-day protocol with both of these two things. I'm at a you know, daily protocol of the BPC-157, and I'm on a, on a bi-weekly protocol of the TB500 uh, thymosin beta-4 compound. And my thought is, do it for a month, get the healing benefits from it, then cycle off of it. And then maybe in six months, do another round. Uh, I think this could be the kind of thing where for those of us that train jujitsu regularly, for those of us that are uh, into physical culture, into fitness, that are beating up our bodies all the time, you know, you get those lingering aches and pains that kind of don't seem to get away. Man, my shoulder's been bugging me, my hip's been bugging me. You get these things that kind of accumulate. And so it occurs to me that compounds like this Wolverine stack 
could be something that you do it a couple times a year when you want to accelerate that healing. And so that's uh, probably how I intend to do this stuff moving forward. And I plan to research other peptides and look into them because there's a lot of very, very interesting ones out there that are worth maybe paying attention to. Um, should you do this stuff? You know, this video is not to tell you to do anything. I'm not your doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional. You know, uh, I don't know any particulars about you. So I can't recommend that you do anything. To me, this video is just for informational purposes. Uh, if you're someone who uh, fancies yourself a biohacker, uh, as I do, I'm, you know, looking at improving the quality of my life across across the board, uh, nutritional, you know, nutritional health, supplementation, restorative modalities, uh, fitness modalities, all those things. So if you're kind of into the biohacking space, you might want to look at peptides because they show incredible potential. Um, in terms of dosing, you know, you're going to have to do your own research. Uh, I'm doing 250 micrograms of BPC-157, which seems to be a pretty common a recommendation out there. Uh, it's based on your weight and that sort of thing. And I'm doing a couple thousand micrograms of TB500. And uh, But again, uh, recipes out there tend to vary a little bit. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any real downside to doing a lot of this stuff because again, peptides are something that your body produces. But uh, I am of the opinion that you should look for the minimum viable dose, right? The minimum effective dose of anything you do, whether it's a supplement, whether it's a skincare product, whatever, minimum viable dose is really where you wanna be because you don't wanna take excess of anything. Uh, for one thing, it's wasteful. And for another thing, it could have some unintended consequences if you put too much of this stuff in your body. So do your own research. Um, how do you take this stuff? Well, you have to nerd out a little bit because it comes in a powdered form, in a freeze-dried powder. So what you have to do is reconstitute it. You have to turn it into a liquid that can be injected. And that's not hard to do. You get some uh, bacteriostatic water, electrostatic water, uh, and then you reconstitute it and you have to look at a peptide calculator to make sure you're getting your ratios correct so that you can get the dosage that you need. None of that's real hard. And then you inject it subcutaneously, which is into the fat layer of your belly. I just pinch a little bit of my belly. Uh, it's an insulin needle, so the needle's like half an inch long at most. So it's really no big deal to get an injection. Uh, but it takes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of research to figure out how to do this. Uh, and once you do, it's not particularly hard. So uh, that's what I have for you today. I'm curious to hear from you in the comments below. Have you experimented with peptides? What are your thoughts about peptides? Have you used the Wolverine stack? And if so, what has your uh, uh, results been on that? And does having a beard help the Wolverine stack have more teeth? All right, I look forward to talking to you next time. See you later.